like it is. I tell you, it's like medicine over there. And if we take it, we're going to get well. And we're going to get well. And uh, But let me just tell you, today's show, we got overseer Pastor Michael Chapman here. And we're going to be talking about the Black Billions. Because, as you know, St. John Baptist Church is engaged in a major project in the Fruit Belt and has had a breakthrough in the last few weeks that is allowing them to go forward. And um, I, I just want to say, because I mentioned it to the pastor, let's be honest, this, this project is more enriching and of more value and, and have much more to give to the community than the so-called stadium project. And, and I think we're very fortunate that, that, to have not only all of those who are connected in the officership of the Black Billions Corporation willing to come on and give these periodic updates on what's happening and what's available and opportunities for you. And so I don't want us to miss that because, you know, we get food sometimes and all those other voices and folks working on the stadium project, you don't hear much from them. You certainly haven't heard what advantages has been for us and, and who got jobs anyway. But anyway, I'm, I'm not fussing. I'm just pointing out something you need to be sure you are clear on and recognize in this moment. And with that said, let me introduce you to my guest. You already know I'm Pastor Chapman is, is here. And I, I want to turn the mics over to you because I know you have things you just desire to share and we want to hear it. And you know all the pieces you need to hit. And any questions that come on, you can join us at 716 eight three seven eleven twelve and stay on topic if you got a question you need to get in early and uh with that said let me just again say hello and good to have you here well thank you so much and god bless you and thank you for having me and uh, i just have to acknowledge that if god had not been with us over these last 21 years if god had not been with us uh, this would have never come to fruition. True that. Uh, we were able to run and not get weary, walk and not faint. Uh, and he really strengthened us. Hold the mic up closer. He to really you. strengthened us. He he really did. And and just I could see him involved in so many situations and circumstances. I could just see his hand on mm. this. Mm. And this is a faith based initiative. It is spirit driven. And this is ministry. Yes. For me, this is ministry. I spent 18 years in formal education in the classroom, uh, doing degree after degree in, in theology and divinity, masters of divinity, master of art pastoral. This is ministry. This yes. is this is what we call home missions. All right. And so this is a home missions. And so what we're talking about first, uh, I want to just thank you, Mr. Anderson, for having just the the courage to uh, to be objective and to let uh, a diversity of voices speak, so that people can have a a total uh, uh, insight yeah. into what uh, to whatever the issue is. Now, the first thing is that the market. Mm -hmm. I hear that the city will be releasing after 13 years. They will be releasing, and I'm hearing some place around January 15th that uh, we will have a closing. Right. So the market, and that market has, uh, uh, that's there at Locust and High Street. And we've been working on that for 13 years. Wow. And uh, we've had all types of obstacles and hostility in, in us trying to get that market up. So now, we will get the land, we have architectural drawings, and then we will go to some funding sources to put the money in place. Already had been to them, but we couldn't move forward because we didn't have right. ownership right. of the land. Right. And so this is going to be a key issue. Uh, so we will get on the 15th of January, we're looking to have control of that land. And we have already drawings, and so we got uh, three three floors will be mixed housing, one and two bedroom, fifteen units, twelve to fifteen units. On the first floor will be a fifty four hundred square foot uh, market, fifty four hundred square foot. Now I do say that from a business perspective, because this is a project based model. In other words, our young folk. 
our young folk are going to be the ones that's going to be overseeing this and running this. And so the first major question operationally is can the market be viable? And I, when we first 13 years ago, yes, no problem. But now there have been some factors that have taken place, which from a business perspective, we have to take into consideration. Yes. There is a, uh, our Air Brothers have a store right there at Maple and High. And they are, they've been in the community a long time, have a good relationship in the community. I have talked to them to see if when we put this market up, would the Arab community be interested in actually running it? Uh, Honorable Betty Jean Grant said, Pastor, what would be best is, what would be best is for our community from a, a psychological perspective is if we ran it ourselves. And I said, okay, that's two alternatives. The other thing that took place was that the state uh, honorable uh, Crystal Peoples, let, uh, assemblywoman, they allocated $3 million to a site right there on Locust and uh, Carlton to do a, a fruit and co-op there. And now there are competing businesses on both sides of us. So it changes the dynamic. Right. So this is one of the questions I'm asking my, the young folk. Now I have a group of young folk that work with me and worked on different projects and I'm getting ready to bring them. Matter of fact, we just did a press conference uh, a few days ago and they were the ones that were speaking. And I got some sharp young folk that's been in business and leadership. And the question I'm posing, if the young folk want us to do it, is this. Given now that there has been surrounding businesses that are doing the basically the same type of products, is it feasible to put the market there or should we have that space open for maybe a number of small businesses? Mm. I'm not in this. I'm we're in this to develop the community. Now it used to be uh, uh, markets and corner stores. On, yep, yep, they're all throughout. All of, but the population over there then was about twelve to 15,000 just the population, residential population. And it was my majority, uh, 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 um, minority uh, resident. Right. But what happened was the lots in the fruit belt were like 24 to 30 feet wide by 100 feet long, like a bowling alley. Right. And so the city put, a, put, a, put in a legislation that any new bill had to have 50 foot frontage. So then you had to combine two or three lots in, in order, order to, to yeah. and, and it was a it was a reasonable uh, uh, approach because the other way, if one house caught on fire, it was like row houses and all these we would burn down the whole block. Mm. So they changed to say, and I'm I'm not knocking that. That was a, a good uh, decision that you need to have 50 foot frontage. I'm saying that to say you cannot get 11 or 12,000 folk over there now because uh, one house is sitting on what used to be three lots. Right. So that means the population might only could be able to get up to six. You got to take a third. If it was 11 or 12,000, you take a third of that population yeah. just about. So you might be able to get up to 8,000. Uh, and this is not home ownership, some home ownership. So. Uh, um, our question becomes now, do we complete the bottom floor with some alternative type of business? Do we do the market? And I already have some of the top people that have worked in tops and Wegmans at the administrative and ownership level to come in and help. But the, it's still, if we got a, 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 food distribution place at Locust and Carlton, which is one block south of us, 
And then we have our Arab brothers that are situated in the community for a long time, uh, sitting to the west, one block to the west of us. Doesn't make sense then to try to put a, another uh, a, mar a market that is duplicating what these two uh, uh, organizations are trying to do. That's the question that has to be answered. And that, that is, look, what you just laid out is just good business sense. You consider whenever you're going to start a business, what's in place, what's the need for what you're going to put in place. And so everything you laid out makes good sense. Had you been allowed to move forward back when you originally started out, we would have a different story. Those competing sources weren't there then. And so now having to figure out what to do with it now, what kind of establishment to have, I think that's appropriate. And I think um, what I hear you doing is even putting it out to the larger community. If they have any ideas, to, to pump them out. The young folks, it's going to be their responsibility. This is a project-based model and our young folk. And uh, our, um, and while I'm on that, my wife committed a thousand dollars to a young a group of young ladies that come in on Sunday, mm. and they were supposed to come and come across the campus, and we were going to take them on a tour of the campus, and then bring them in and sit them down and show them our library and everything. And uh, some of them we got ill, and so therefore they couldn't come. So we had to we're going to have to reschedule it. But I want them to know if somebody could get it out to them. Uh, that that thousand dollars is ready for them. They just have to submit an invoice, and and then tell them when they submit the invoice. If they don't hear back, then follow up. Just follow up, because we 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 are a large organization, and we try to do things uh, according to accounting principles, and and so um, we just need to for them to follow up. And somebody will we we're not we're not going we're not leaving we're not going we we sit over on that corner we've been here for we ain't going nowhere so tell them to follow up so I wanted to make sure we got that out and we let those young ladies know that the thousand dollar commitment that Minister Ina has for them is still uh, is available so they don't have to worry about it right. tell them don't charge us interest though <laughs> <laughs> they got a good attorney <laughs> anyway, anyway. Any go, get it, lady, go get it ladies go get it ladies go get it good morning buffalo uh, i want to answer your question uh, my name is austin man i know i'm the, the youth guy I'm supposed to bring the youth perspective and so when you ask that question of how viable is the market i think at a certain point from my understanding of my people the young people we want the best, right? And I'll give you an example to help illustrate that point. If I just wanted sweatpants, right? If I just needed clothes, I'll go to Walmart, right? But we don't go to Walmart. We go to Nike, right? Even when we don't have the money, we go to Nike. And the reason I'm saying that's viable is because when you get kids to believe in a bigger picture, right? If the market really is the best, if it's providing a different scenario, a different environment for kids our age, right? Because it's things that we don't understand. We don't understand that groceries are cheaper than fast food, right? We don't understand that. So if you're helping us understand those things by buying food for yourself, how healthy that can change, what, what good food in your body does to your energy, does to your clarity of mind, things of that nature, I think that kids would be willing to commit to that cause. And then once we commit to the cause, right? Once we're committed and we see that it's valuable, that it's something that's beneficial, then if you want to alter and switch to business models, it'll be easier because then you already have established a culture of uncompromising excellence. Right where we're the we do the best of the best. You may not understand the process, but if you've seen the product and you trust me, right? You don't need to understand the process. You'll understand that I know how to do it. I'm gonna get you there. So I think that when you're talking about young people committing to the cause, if you can create an environment that makes us a place that we feel like is worth committing to, then we'll follow you through the through the thick and the thin. But I think that it is viable as long as you approach it with a with an attitude of. I'm not compromising. This is uncompromising excellence. Because if you ask me when you're talking about food distribution or food access, I've yet to talk to a young person in any part of Buffalo who's like, yeah, I don't want to eat better. Right. So we know there's a need there. But the question becomes, what organization can we come attached to? And I think the benefits that you have is that you do look like us. It is different. Right. It's not it's not I'm not saying that's OK. Or it's understood. But I'm saying when it's someone that looks like me, it's a little easier to understand because it's familiar. And so I don't think it's a competition from other markets, but I think that when you have an area, you really have a, a, a platform and you've created a, a figure where you're someone trustworthy in Buffalo. So I think playing on that and using that to the best of your ability, 
I don't doubt the viability about it, especially when we're talking about my people, because this is the same generation that goes through trends over and over and over and over and over again. So which ones stick? The ones that stick, right? The companies that stay around, Nike that stays around are the ones that we can trust, have shown us that it's worth it. And as you can see, once we know that it's worth it, we have no problem investing. We have more shoes. We spend more on, on cosmetic items than any other race. And if you want to go to age demographic, I bet as you're younger, right? I don't see too many 50-year-olds um, walking around with Jordans on, right? So for the younger kids who don't mind spending money, don't mind committing to a cause, I think if you position it correctly, there's no doubt in my mind that it's viable in that area. Then my question would be, if may I? Yeah. Oh, my, my question would be, my question would be this. So then, it does not matter particularly what the product is, because we could do the market and do food, and but but that, that's a tough business. I mean, it, the, the the margin of profit and loss is very tight food distribution, but we would also go out to Tops and, and, and Wegmans and see if we can establish relationships that would help us get the food uh, at a lower rate, but also get the higher quality food. Now, one, one, but then do we do businesses and have our, in, in, in that 5,400 square feet, we probably could get, if we use a model, because we're sending 50 something folk to, uh, to, to the uh, on a cruise to Jamaica and to uh, the Bahamas uh, uh, in, uh, January 6th. And that's my leadership. I know, where's our tickets? We'll, and, we'll pay. And, 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 so, so if any, if any, openings come y'all would be able to fill it now you gotta yeah. you gotta get to miami on your own and you gotta oh, get, i could get to miami you gotta get back on your own, I can get no back on my own. <laughs> but the cruise is covered oh, so if, if, yeah. if 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 anyone drops out then i'll oh, make sure your name is in okay yeah. if, if you're serious about it so serious. okay so we're sending our leadership and we do this on numerous occasions once or twice a year or every other year or something so the, and the model down there is that in a small space, they might have 20 businesses. Right. right. So they're not. And now with computerized and electronics, it's even easier to run your businesses and you don't need as much geographical space. So in that 52 or 5,400 square feet where we could put the market, do we do food or do we put 15 or 20 small incubator businesses and let the young folk run their businesses? Now, when I say whether it's viable is because each month uh, there's going to be mortgage need to be paid. Now, we know that the housing will bring in the the mortgage. I think the apartments will be somewhere around a thousand for the single and 1250 or something like that, depending because, but we really looking at the medical campus that the people that work in the medical campus, if they live right there, they didn't need, they don't need a car. They don't, I mean, there's some expenses that they can eliminate in their budget and still be right there at work. So, You're absolutely right. I, I want to weigh in on, on some things you can do. I think uh, as you were talking, I thought about you could create a, a incubation part yeah. where you allow upcoming businesses that are growing in the community, especially if you want them to be useful businesses, to where you incubate them in a spot there. And 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 if I was a funder, I think a funder that is committed to helping youth entrepreneurship would be interested in partnering in some way and helping to fund where young people who are trying to start businesses get a launching platform. And then it could be training as well, even as they're doing their business. It, that's one angle. And it doesn't stop the other part of the market that you're talking about doing. I think it could be a multi-purpose location. And I think I, I, I agree that the competition is is not bad. You're not trying to put them out of doing whatever they do, don't store it around. And if they have no problem with your existence, I'd say that, hey, just another great opportunity for the community, another draw for the community, for the city. I mean, because you know, those that you do have you yeah. do have the you do have the you do have the twelve you do have the 18 to 20,000 folk in the medical campus. You're only a block or two yep. away from Michigan. But there's one thing y'all keep saying that kind of just kind of chilled me a little bit. You keep saying what I got to do. This is what y'all got to do. Yeah, this is the community. And so the young folk got to get a group of folk together. 
They got to get with my young folk, get a subgroup together, start having some meetings because we're already dealing with the architects. We've got to do phase one, phase two soil samples. This is a learning experience, and I'm going to let y'all follow right behind me and be in the meetings at the corporate meetings where you would probably never get to be. Now you're going to be able to get there and see and hear what it's like at the corporate table. And that's why I think when you're talking on that, I know you talked about how the food market is competitive, but again, if we're getting into business, a lot of markets are competitive. That's the nature of business. And so going off of what you said, if it's going to be young led, the reason why I'm advocating for the market over a bunch of small micro incubator businesses because business is difficult, never more difficult than the beginning stages. And so the problem is for me, right? I'm a speaker, but I know what I want to speak about. Now I teach people how to speak for what they want so they can speak for what they need, but it took me a year to get there. And I have support systems around, but when you talk about simpler concepts, everybody understands what a grocery store is. Everybody understands what a physical trainer is, right? These are general concepts, but when you go and fragment it to businesses, it gets difficult and it's difficult journeys to learn. So when you have a simple idea that we can rally behind and get used to our business acumen, right? What does it mean to go to a corporate meeting? What does it mean to have a pitch? What does it mean to have a strategy session? Then if you want to divide and have some incubator businesses, that's fine. But that's more of a class two because mm-hmm. class one is just getting used to business. Seeing the world as an entrepreneur versus a consumer requires a big, vast mental and character change that I think when you're helping people along, it should be as simple as possible. What we don't want is we don't want great business minds, great business people being left aside or cast aside because they don't have the support or the know-how to get through that early phase. Let me cut you off and, and be rude. Because when you get my age, you don't. I'm not trying to be rude. I just don't want to forget. <laughs> so, so here, when you talk about the incubator and all, and, and that, that's that's good. Y'all, I'm we gonna put y'all together to do that. But the other component of this is uh, we talked about the market. That a few days ago we just did a press conference, and we have a Gethsemane Missionary Baptist Church, and. And we're doing a renovation of it. And we're going to use the 1874 old sanctuary. We're not going to, we're going to, we're, we're going to retrofit it. And we're not going to use that sanctuary because we got a newer sanctuary now. What we're going to do is we're going to do gardening. Now we're doing a, we're doing a $2 million development at Gethsemane. We just received a $250,000, uh, 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 a contribution from We See God too. One of our corporations donated two hundred fifty thousand, and the renovation of 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 uh, Gethsemane is going to cost about a million dollars for the eighteen seventy four to completely restore it outside. Wow! So it's going, but but we and so we're going. We we got two fifty, and we're looking for other foundations to try to match it. And we're going, but we're going to go on the ground this year. Now we also have a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar addition that we're putting on to Gethsemane, and it's going to be a two lane swimming pool. It's going to be a two lane bowling alley. We're trying to look at putting a gun range in. We're looking at a multiplicity of recreational type, even the types of uh, the paint guns too, so that the kids can learn. And so they don't look at guns as a weapon, but they look at guns as a tool teach, teach. and educate them. And that is part of the safety of the family. The families grew up, everybody had guns. My uncles, and they, they, they were squirrels and possums. And I, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you need and, some of them too. That's right. So I'm saying that, yes, everybody's doing what they need to be doing. Here we got an opportunity and we also put in a, a greenhouse there nice. so that we can grow our own food. And this is connected to the market because the market is going to have a, a outdoor area that during the summer, the kids can bring the food up there and distribute it. So this is, I mean, and this is on the table. We met with the architect. They're doing the drawings in four or five months. They will be ready. And our young folk, this is for our young folk. And so they're gonna have to get busy. They're gonna have to really, they're gonna have to really get busy. Well, I know one thing, listeners. Um, this ain't no joke. I, I hope you taking this information down, and I hope you'll be calling St. John and 
and wanting to know more about the projects that they're doing and how you can get in on it. We're going to get a number of how you can, what's the, where you need to contact in. But I'm telling you, this is, we don't need to blow these moments. What we're looking at is what, basically, what was the game plan when, for Black Wall Street. Remember, Black Wall Street didn't come already developed. It had to be developed. And it had to take steps such as like what you hear and Pastor Chapman mention now. And so, I, I look, it behooves us not to take this lightly and to join in, especially young folks. For, 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 for my, my young folk, and you were talking about what does it mean to be in a corporate meeting? What does it mean to There's another aspect of it. What does it mean when you go there with a black man that's in charge of a billion dollars? Mm -hmm. What does it mean? See, what does it mean when you come to the table with somebody that come there begging and don't have anything? And it doesn't mean when the people come to the table because of an African-American male that's in charge. And there's no voting about it in charge. Money don't move unless he sign off on it. And we have a whole corporation structure, organizational structure, over 24. What does it mean to have an organizational structure, infrastructure? You can't do it by yourself. No, you don't carry this load by yourself. You can't even create what you would like to see by yourself. Human resource. You need a human resource department. You need a finance. You need accounting. You need administrative. You need, I mean, you need diversity. You need all of these type of departments. You need building grounds because you got physical locations. You how do what about this peripheral services when you put up the market? You also need uh, uh security. So we have our own security company. So mm. so we we just expand our security company. We have our own accounting. And so there are some folk. Uh, matter of fact, when my accounting base got short, I used some folk from Canisius Masters in accounting. They came over and helped me uh, and did their internships in our organization. So you learn how you learn financing. I mean, you learn all of this and management, supervision. What's the difference? This is what this is what they got to learn. You know, well, you know what I'm thinking of. I'm thinking. Uh, this is a wild idea, but uh, I'm going to throw it out there. I would like to see somewhere in there its own banking, youth banking, some kind of collaborative relationship if the banking had total staff, youth, but it a real banking. Well, let me say this. You give me five youth, we got a credit union. That's right. That's that right. we've had for 30 some years. And so it's an established credit union. And what we're what we were working on right now is what is called a CDFI, Community Development Financial Institution, and that having your own financial institution to cover your own developments, to cover your own development. Right. And so, therefore, the money that comes and the interest and all of that that come goes back into it. So, yes, uh, a financial if it's not a bank, it, it could, could be, be a CDFI, yeah. an alternative. And let me tell you this. Let me give you this. Oh, this, we got to take a break. Sorry, he's doing a break. Oh, we got to go to a break. Okay, we're going to go to a break. And when we come back, we've got a few bit more moments out of Pastor Chapman. And I hope you're paying attention. Don't leave us. And um that the the final thing that I'll just make mention of is I just heard that McKinley High School has some houses. One bedroom houses. One bedroom. One bedroom. And this is a and really one and two bedroom houses is really what the future is going to be looking like. Mm -hmm. but, but because people haven't not having many children, right. and and then you got the older population, and 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 a lot of folk might not be married, but they're living together for financial reasons. Right. They, they, they can't make That's it. Right. Two right. households trying to make it independently, it, it's best. It's a, it's a challenge. So they 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 they. they 
find someone that they don't mind. So too, it's almost like uh, senior citizens. But what I'm saying is they have two houses. And I, tell, I got two people on my board that's on the board of uh, on the board of education. Uh, I got two members of our, our two disciples that's on that's on the board. And I challenged them yesterday. I want them two houses. Mm. I want them two houses. I got lots in the fruit belt I could put them houses on. I got wow. lots in the fruit belt that I could put. They got they got to be small houses, one bedroom, right? And so I got. And when they first started this program, McKinley, 15 years ago, I bought their first houses. I bought four of them. And we put, they, they build them inside, and then we bring them out and we put them in. I got one right there over at 73 Lemon. The other three, some people in the Southern Tier, people on the farm, they didn't have any housing. They bought them from me. After I bought them from the school, they bought them from me. So I want, they, I was just on the news that they got homes and they got one bedroom home. And I got, two, we got a couple of lots. We got a couple of lots in the fruit belt and we will buy them and put them on there. And then the young folks. Hey, we back live and uh, you have eight minutes. That's a chapter on saying, the mic. Eight minutes. And we're back. So what I want to say is I heard that McKinley High School is building some homes inside. Now, first of all, I want to say that 15 years ago when they started that project building homes in the in McKinley and then selling them to someone and bringing them out and putting them on, we, our comprehensive urban development model, bought the first four houses. Mm. We bought them houses and we brought it. one of them we put out on site at 73 Lemon and it's right there today. And we want those two houses that they got in McKinley. We want to talk to them about uh, uh, getting those houses. And the young folk from McKinley, they came out and worked with Mr. Lamparelli, one of my construction uh, general contractors, worked with him and put that house on the ground, sealed it up, and the people from Children from McKinley to help build it, help put it on site. Nice. And then the other thing, just the financial part of it. If you have some young folk that are progressive and they're 18 to 19, 20, going to stay in this area and they want a house, let them buy the house and we will guarantee the mortgage. Wow. So they get the house, we'll put it on again, and, and the mortgage will be whatever it is. And we will stand behind it. We ain't going to pay for it, right? but we will stand behind it. But if they did get in trouble and couldn't keep it up, then we always could step in, keep it going. Because usually if you get in trouble, it's just a heat cup for five or six months. You get back on your feet and you could always roll what they didn't pay back mm -hmm. on the back end. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is here's some young folk getting in homes and they're not double homes or five or six bedroom homes. These homes, just like those container homes, you could live comfortably in those container homes and, and it wouldn't cost you more than 100, 120,000 over 30 years instead of paying 200, 250, 300,000. What do you think? I think that when we talk about unsustainable housing, it's good to hear someone that's actually providing help all the way through the process right and that's one thing that i'm hearing you're saying that i think is different from what i was understanding from other programs and other people is that you're not trying to give us fish you're trying to teach us how to fish so that you don't gotta fish no more right so um it's something that i think that kids need to get in touch with i think that kids need to get involved with i know i'm going to be following up seeing how i can get involved because again when you have hungry kids in the city who want to make great um, unlike other, unlike the market idea, every, again, everybody knows what housing is. We know we need somewhere to lay our heads. So these are simple ideas that aren't high in the sky, but can be realistically applied. So I'm all for it. And I'm excited to hear how these turn out. And when I'm well, not excited to see because I'm going to be a part of them. I'm telling you, I'm going to be following out, reaching out, doing my due diligence. But it's definitely some things that we need to share the word about because it's showing a different tide, a different change for the generations to come. So maybe we won't be doc, maybe we won't be uh, nurse assistants. We're looking like when you're enriched in this nature, well, maybe I want to be a doctor. So I'm excited about not only what this would do for the people in the program, but for the culture of the youth in Buffalo as a whole. Uh, Pastor Chapman, I, I'm not 
I'm not putting you out, but I'm just saying keep an eye on the time because you got to get out of here. And I know you. I, I, got, I don't want. I got to put pick up minutes. Right. And I wanted on 40, 48 air that, years. That 48 we years. pushed him out on time. So if he late, I yeah. can write a note for him. But I don't know what I'm gonna say in there. He late. Yeah. Okay. But uh, um, really, everything you shared and have been sharing about the project, the, the, the work that's being done on the Black Billions and, and just, just the effort of St. John is hugely valuable, already enriching for our community. I don't know of any other entity where you have Black leadership moving effectively with money in hand and doing things. And you already withstood the, the major part of the storm which was the blockage. And I, I want people to understand that is hugely important because if you had been given a go ahead years ago without any interference, what we would have today would just have people marveling just how wonderful it, what has come to fruition. But uh, one of the things I'd like, I, I'd like to say is that this has been just a wonderful experience and sometime the timing, God, the timing is in God's plan and how he sets it up. And uh, this has been a 21-year journey. And I've been pastoring for 21 years. And this is my 21st year. Uh, the last uh, weekend in November was my 21st year. And I told the congregation, I just have come of age. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm at 71. I'm, I'm grown now. You're a baby. <laughs> yeah. so, so, look, this is is viable it's available if they call if they uh email w e letter c dot office at gmail.com and leave their information our executive administrators will pull it up and we will pull a put together a uh a a list We'll compile a list of individuals and we will call everyone and have maybe have a meeting at the Life Center where we can start these young folk putting them in committees and, and in various groups so that they can start to participate. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the message to anybody that knows some young folks who are serious about having a serious opportunity in moving their life forward, uh, you've heard it and, and there is an opportunity. And it's just a matter of stepping up. If you, you know, you got to be in it if you want to be a real part of it. And there's this opportunity that is available. I must I, say, his I, time is to, he got to transition because it's just the time. We don't want the wife mad at us. Yeah, you know, that's <laughs> another wife telling you, you know. That's a wife for only 27 uh, years. Yeah, 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 indeed. It is, it is, um, it is powerful. Oh, she said you can stay till 11. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she gave you a bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that, um, we, 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 we are connected like that. Yeah, all right. You don't have to ask. I didn't have to call her anything. Dig it, dig it. She called me. She called him, called here and told me <laughs> I got an extra 20 minutes. All yeah. right. Well, we ain't gone, y'all. And people, y'all can still call in if you want to talk to Pastor Chapman, 716. 837-1112. And uh, no doubt, this is a rip. Talk about a, a in this time of gifts. This is a gift, what we were hearing today. Hey, we got a call for you. And so we're going to go right to the phone. Caller, you're on the air. You need to turn that up. We can't hear. Hold on. Hold on. We're not getting in here yet. One second. Let, let me, uh, I don't know if it's off or on. Uh, I've got the volume. Okay. All right. I think we're good to go. Uh, I, I can hear you, but call her. Hold on, because I'm having a little problem hearing you in the booth. Okay. Oh, we got you now. There you go. Oh, yes. Hello, Dr. Doyle. Yes. Good morning, Reverend Chapman. This is Mother Doyle calling. Good morning, Mother. I have, yes, I have a very quick question. And uh, 
whatever, and I, I like your plans, but I wonder in, in whatever business you are going to develop, in your plans, is there a program to train young people in providing good service, respecting the customer, realizing the customer is very important, and this works both ways, okay, and I won't take up too much time. I just had a question about, and the reason I re bring it up, because that's what's missing in our community. And so I'm, I'm sure you probably do, and I just wanted to hear what the plan is for that. And could you repeat your website again? Hello? We got you. We got you. Uh, got, yes. Okay. Yeah. I'll hang up and, and listen to uh, Reverend Tatman's answer, and they repeat the website. Thank you. The website is W E. The website is W E letter C G O D dot office at gmail dot com. The answer to your question is part of our business and leadership academy that when we bring young folk in now we we taught them how to do bingo we spent twenty thousand and showed and taught them how to do bingo after nine months it started to make money and we we shut it down because we were not there to make money we were there to teach the young folk and work with the city to take them through the techniques and the forms and everything so we did that and and the bingo machine cost fifteen thousand and then there was another 5,000 for additional types of uh, equipment that we needed. We did a, a limousine service where we put up 60,000 and bought three limousines. Now I'm saying this because our business and leadership academy, one of the things we teach the kids is character, civility, and community. And also we think, we don't think our community is short on on ability or intellectual wealth but we think that we need a uh, moral and ethical so we have also a class in eth ethical behavior business ethics because i don't care how smart or genius you are if you're not an ethical person you're going to end up in jail or you're going to end up shaming yourself in your community yeah. so yes we do have character civility and community and that addresses how you conduct yourself and then also it teaches us as adults that generations are moving and we shouldn't want them to stay stuck where we are at. And so we have to have some flexibility along with them having some flexibility to find middle ground. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> it's it does, again, I'm, I'm listening as a young person I'm, and I'm hearing it and it's hitting all the metrics that we need. Again, there's always these pitfalls that you just don't know till you're there but you're helping us be aware of them beforehand, right? There's gonna come a time when you're in business, you're gonna have to make sure that you're on the right side of your ethics and morals, whatever your guiding principles are. So keeping that at the forefront, making sure that we're looking at the future before we get there. These are the things that I was saying, why it's so important or why it may be useful again with the market idea, because we know there are so many elements of business and the fact you're providing them is great and that's perfect, um, but kids have a have a speed, right? Kids have a speed. Uh, even the most disciplined kids are still kids. We're still young. And so making sure that we're walking along this process in a way that works, like you're describing, but also helps us do it in a way that is sustainable and is realistic for us to complete at a high level. Because that's something I hear, I'm hearing you're describing a lot as well. And that's what I just, my biggest thing is uncompromising excellence, meaning that we are going to do the best we can because what I've seen in business in my one year, which is nothing to your, to your many out here, but what I've seen is that at the end of the day, when it comes to business, if you provide an excellent product, if you're, if you're focused on excellence, the money and all the other things will take care of themselves. So getting the mindset of excellence, I think, is going to change the community for young people, not only financially, not only prosperity wise, but as a whole, because if we can all be the best that we can be every time, we're, if we can try to be the best we can be every day, that's all we can ask for as a community and as people. So I'm excited. And again, I think that's something that's going to not only change people's pockets, change people's minds, but really change hearts of the community as well. So again, still and, 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 and one of the keys to learning is being able to make mistakes. Yes. Our job is not that you're going to be perfect. 
Our job is to make sure that your mistakes don't cripple you for the rest of your life. Oh. There are some mistakes that can really uh, be mm -hmm. detrimental. Yeah, and it takes you years and years and decades to try to overcome those, whether they are monetary or debt. And that's the other thing. You can get rich off debt. You can get rich off credit. You can get rich off there, there are assets. Uh, there's a no, numerous ways. Because every single project we've done, we started with zero. Mm. Every single project. But the other thing is, I took a vow of poverty, and my wife came along with me And because I got caught up with the Franciscans in seminary. Mm. And I really, really had a, a monastery, monks, that's fasting. And so we took a vow of poverty. So all of our developer fees and everything that we made over the years, it went right back into the community. Plus, we weren't getting funded by anybody. So we still had to come up with the money. So we did developments. And all those developer millions of dollars of developer fees you hear me talk about, that went right to the church. It, we did not take it. And that's what we need. We need people that are concerned about the community and not personal wealth. All right, if you want to, if you want personal wealth, then you ought to go into another business. You shouldn't be a politician talking about personal wealth. That's right. You are supposed to be a public servant. Hello. And if you want to get rich, there are other no, businesses. There's there some other things in there that say, "Come on and get rich." That's right. But we should not drain uh, assets off the community that's right it's about uh community wealth using biblical principles so that's what i want to do you know the, the, um just this past week there was an article in the paper about the chapman's and two hundred fifty thousand dollars um want to expound on that um that was the press conference and one of our corporations we see god too it's one of our family charitable organizations. This is our family, the Chapman Doss family. We run, we run just about 17 corporations we have. Nice. And one of the corporations, because Gethsemane is the oldest historical landmark in the Fruit Belt, We See God Too has uh, contributed 250000 to the renovation of that as seed money to see if other foundation so that two hundred fifty thousand uh goes with another four hundred thousand so the total amount that we see god has donated to the renovation 1.4 million dollar renovation of gethsemane is six hundred fifty thousand over the last three or four years restoring that 1874 historical landmark Man, I, I'm, I got to tell you, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about next week, everybody will be talking about Kwanzaa and every principal in here is already touched in this project. And this, I mean, particularly, this is a great opportunity. You don't have to go way out to to uh, wherever they build in the stadium in order to Orchard get in Park, on this. Yeah, you don't yeah. have to go out there. This is right here in the heart of a community that needs it so badly. And I'm, I'm just like you, Austin. What I'm hearing is something that is not only attractive to young people, but adults too. And, and adults, not just so you can get in line. Think about some young people who you know need a break, need a lift up, need an opportunity. Grandchildren. Yeah, yeah, be, be a, a shoulder. You know, everybody talking about we standing on the shoulders that are gone ahead. Well, some of us need to be shoulders lifting up these young folks to higher ground. And here is a real opportunity. I, I don't say it lightly when I talk about Black Wall Street. I only say it because the more people understand it didn't start from all the pictures you already see. It started from moments just like this. And um, hey, look, um, this is the opportunity. I, 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 this, is, this is really great. And look, and if you're still stuck in the winds of adversity about who to like or don't to like, it ain't about that. Let's look at the project. Let's look at the opportunity. Don't get mad at personality. And remember, um, you ain't so perfect either. We're all going to be a, on what is considered by somebody a wrong side of an issue. Don't get stuck there. S get stuck in seeing forward and building on the needs that we need to do. And this project represents that. One of the things that 
I had two things. That's why I did. I wasn't able to really become public before. There was two things that was associated with me as an overseer and pastor of St. John. I had to get the Macaulay project done because it was 40 something years old. And I needed to make sure during my tenure in administration that we got that project done. When I first got there, that project was worth uh, 6.7 million. Now, it uh, as of this year, it, we completed it. It's 57 million. Mm -hmm. So that means that's a 50 million dollar increase in the revenue and assets of the of the uh, Macaulay, uh, the, that uh, uh, Oak Michigan Housing Development Fund Company, which is a legal name. Uh, so I'm saying. What I'm saying to you is then I had to get the towers done. Yep. And we did. And both of those we got done this year, my 21st year, both of them got them done. Now I have completed. Those were the long term plans that I had to get done. We had goals, but the long term plan, mm -hmm. long term plan was getting that Macaulay done and getting the towers done. And we did 87 million this year and got them done. And so therefore those are solidified for the next 40 or 50 years. And so now I can give act, uh, uh, some assistance if the community wants it. I mean, if they don't want it, I don't want to go anywhere where I'm not wanted. I got right. plenty of things to do. <laughs> exactly. Well, I think one of the things that you talk about a lot too is you're trying to take people to the level of, of understanding business, business principles but it's things that people talk on that they don't understand, right? Like, so they might say, well, I don't know why you have to do this because they don't understand. It's bigger than what you see on the surface. You could get mad at me for making decisions, but the way that business principles work, this is the way it is. So one of the things I love about the supermarket with the young people is, I think that's also an opportunity that's different than all these other entrepreneur programs that are out there is you can introduce them to non-traditional paths for us. So like logistics. People don't understand all the logistics on how you get the stuff to the grocery market. Even one of the things you talked about is partnership and collaboration. You know that a spin for your organization is not going to be the same as a Wegmans or a Tops. So that partnership makes sense. And so many times, I think, in my experience with our communities, those partnerships and collaborations that are win-win solutions, people don't see that. So I do think with young people working with something like this, that's grassroots, that you don't, you have your own funding, you have your own money, you're not bought or owned by anybody else's agenda, is an amazing opportunity if they could see it that way. So I just wanted to add that I commend you guys for that work that you're doing. Um, and I think that this is a great opportunity for young people. Hi. Hey. I heard that you need a customer service and social etiquette skills training. I brought over my brochures. Okay. <laughs> hey, look, this is like fishing, y'all. If you don't drop a hook, you can't catch nothing. <laughs> I'm just passing through. Hello, everybody. Brother Jim, passing Chapman and company. Well, this is Terry and Howard. I was just passing through and I heard um, Mother Doyle say that one of the components that's very important for our youth is to have that customer service training. Mm -hmm. So I heard that on the air. So I'm running in because my organization, mm -hmm. World of Girls and Boys Leadership, we do have an eight weeks um, training program where we teach on social etiquette skills and customer service. So Pastor Chapman, we can partner with you and make this happen. I love it. Mm -hmm. It's so good to see you, Brother Jim. I just wanted to run in and yeah, say, hey, let leave you know leave. we had the component here. Okay, I'm running back out to finish yeah, my business. So I'm going to give you a call. Yeah, uh, but you, they told you I've been down because I got some things going on. And I'm going to be out for a couple of months, but I, I will be in touch. We went to we went to a seminary together, yeah. Holton College. Holton College. Yeah, oh, yeah. so good to see Pastor hey, Chapman. I, 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 I got older. She got younger. Uh, <laughs> older is only 120. You ain't nowhere near that. Uh, <laughs> dig it, dig it, dig it. Okay. Love y'all, family. Yeah, family. Yeah. See ya. The second okay. time we only have one minute left. Um, so one quick thing you want to say as we close out, because like I said, we have our last 30 seconds now. Y'all got to get busy. Y'all got to get busy. Y'all got to y'all got to get with my youth department, call over to your church. Y'all get busy. Have some sub means. We'll come in, start organizing our young people. Cool. Okay. Consider it done. I'm going to get some of those young voices on here, too. Hey, y'all, you heard the good news. Spread it. Go tell it on the mountain uh, to be continued. And have a great day. Love y'all. Oh,
Yes, that whole, the whole oh, collection 